Hey folks, today is Friday, May 18th, 2018. As usual, it's me, Jake Baldino, here to talk about some video game stuff that has been going on this week. And it's been a wild week. It's been a, it's been a wild week. I couldn't do that as fast as I, I hate this stool, man. Are you done? Fucking, yeah, I'm done. The Call of Duty Black Ops 4 live event reveal thing has gone down. People have gotten their hands on the game. We've gotten a bunch of details. So let me breeze through it real quick. The biggest thing, at least for some of us here, no single player. Treyarch has confirmed that single player is not going to be a thing this time around. And they explained in an interview with Polygon that it just wasn't on the map from the beginning. It wasn't what they wanted to do. They apparently just wanted to approach the game differently and make a game that people play with friends, a social game. That's great, but I don't have a lot of friends. They said that they went with what the Black Ops community really felt, and of course, you guys know, the Black Ops games do have a really long-standing community that is still playing. People still play Black Ops 2 all the time. So multiplayer is very strong there, so that's what they decided to double down on, but that's a letdown for me because I thought Black Ops had some of the best campaigns and most interesting stories in the Call of Duty games. So that's a bit of a bummer. I'm so sad. I just feel, I guess, whatever, I guess these games aren't for us now because they also broke down the multiplayer, which is going to be operator-based again uh, with special abilities. A lot of people have been comparing it to something like Rainbow Six Siege in terms of character-based stuff, and I get that. A lot of these rumors that we had heard a month ago do seem to have been panned out uh, because we also got blackout mode, which they haven't really shown much of, but that's essentially their battle royale mode. Interestingly enough, not only is it Call of Duty Battle Royale, but it's also gonna have all different types of vehicles, which is a little different for a Call of Duty game, at least since like Call of Duty 3. So I'm curious to see that. Uh, also zombies mode looks to be quite a departure, a lot of emphasis on melee, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on down there. But as like a video game nerd, one of the best things I liked about this whole reveal thing was that they talked about how the ballistics work in gameplay now. Now it's more ballistic based system of first person shooting. And I'm very curious to see that. I'm also very curious to see how the battle royale mode will go down. Will it be able to have Call of Duty's famous consistent 60 FPS and have this projectile based gameplay? I don't know. I'll tell you exactly how it's gonna go down, 100, Captain Price's drop onto an island. That's a game I wanna play. So I don't really know how to feel about a lot of this. I am more of a campaign based person. I like single player games, but I do dip my toes into Call of Duty multiplayer here and there. And I like some of the stuff they're talking up, but I wanna know what you guys think. Everything I talk about, I linked in the description below if you wanna catch up on more info on it. Uh, I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Is this enough to bring you back? Maybe you haven't played Call of Duty in a while, or maybe you've been playing it forever and uh, are, are you satisfied with the new stuff they bring to the table? Let's talk. Also, real quick, you know I've been teasing things here and there for the last couple of months, it feels like. Uh, so all I'll say, next week, keep your eyes peeled. Maybe consider following twitch.tv slash gameRanksLive. That's all I'm going to say for now. <laughs> Also in some PC news I didn't expect to talk about, but it looks like Stalker 2 is definitely going to be a thing. It's been officially announced. There's a website and everything. All we really know is that it's back in development and it's called Stalker 2 and it's slated for 2021, which feels like a million years from now, but time moves faster and faster every day. And we're all getting older. And, um... We're all gonna die one day. We're all gonna die one day. That was an announcement I definitely did not expect to see, especially in the in the heat of all these other E3 things going on. I think it was nice to see the reveal of what is now a beloved PC FPS classic coming back. That's dope. But in some other news that has just dropped today, uh, we don't talk about it enough here, Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, it's got a big old hands-on preview event. Uh, there's lots of stuff out there, a lot of new info about the game. Uh, there's some gameplay footage out there, and I gotta say the gameplay footage does look really good. I'm hard on these games, but uh, what they have going on is pretty impressive. I do link in the description a Eurogamer video that I think it does the best at just kind of breaking down all the new information that's out there. Uh, the big takeaway though, at least for me, is release date. And they did say that we should expect to see a release date announced in early June meaning probably right before E3 or at that Square Enix thing that they're gonna live stream during E3. Really, as much as I'm not hardcore into these games, I'm excited for fans just because they've been waiting for so damn long and it finally seems like we're at the finish line? Hopefully, fingers crossed, so we'll see how it goes. Also, in case you missed it, we talked about the tease, but uh, uh, Bethesda did launch the official gameplay trailer for Rage 2, and I gotta say, uh, now I'm interested. It looks like it really shakes up uh, the original game, which was okay. Uh, here, it seems like there's a lot more going on, even visually, just from the trailer. It definitely seems like a marriage of both Doom 
and the most recent Mad Max game, which was incredibly underrated. So if those things are combined, I'm all about it. I bring that up because it's being worked on by Avalanche and id, the people who made Doom and Mad Max. So it could be great. We don't have too much more info yet, at least not until E3. Uh, we do know open world and that's really about it. I was skeptical at first, but I'm gonna be keeping my eye on this because I really wanna see where it goes. Uh, but speaking of where things are going, uh, Borderlands 3, Randy Pitchford of Gearbox took to Twitter to go on this weird convoluted uh, statement, which says kind of that Borderlands 3 may not be at E3. I don't know if he's just kind of setting expectations or if he's trying to downplay it only to surprise people. Whatever he's doing is weird. And frankly, I don't care. I just kind of want to see Borderlands 3. I want to know what the deal is. They've been working on it for some time. So who knows what we're actually going to see. I'm curious to see what you guys think of the statement though. Oh, and uh, this kind of flew under the radar, but also sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Metro Exodus uh, is also delayed to the first quarter of 2019. So if you were looking forward to that as a fall game, I hate to uh, cut down your hopes, but that seems to be the case right now. A game like that though, I can patiently wait. The more time they spend on it, the better. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but moving on to some really cool news, Xbox has announced a new controller. Now that's usually not a big deal, but what they have done is announced the Xbox Adaptive Controller, which is essentially one of the first mass market mainstream console manufactured controllers for people with disabilities. It has two large programmable buttons and 19 different jacks to plug in different accessories because uh, certain people who can't play games in certain ways can use different tools and different gadgets to help them play. It's worth looking into just because the tech behind it and the way they made it is, is pretty interesting. And the gadget itself is very nice looking. I just like a slick gadget. So the way I look at it is that this is a complete win because the more people who are going to get access to being able to play games maybe if they previously couldn't is great that's a total win but changing gears over to sony it looks like sony and playstation have announced that they are ending support and production for physical vita cards at the end of 2018 meaning they are going to no longer manufacture playstation vita cartridges now to some people this seems like not really a big deal at all but to fans of the vita this is devastating man and it's just another nail in the coffin for the handheld that never really got all the love and support it deserved, but it, it definitely does have its own little fandom out there. This makes me want to get a Vita though, <laughs> I, again. I left mine on a plane and um, I, think the I think the flight attendant stole it because they, they said they didn't find it. They probably didn't look. They probably didn't look. They definitely didn't look. God damn it. But in some more sad news, it does look like Boss Key is closing their doors. Boss Key, for those of you who don't know, is the studio founded by Cliff Blazinski, uh, the famed creator of Gears of War, uh, who is most notably behind Lawbreakers and most recently Radical Heights. According to a statement by Cliffy B, it looks like Lawbreakers just didn't get the traction it needed to sustain the company. And, you know, I would say that, yeah, that seems to be the case. It wasn't the worst game, it wasn't a terrible game by any means, but it just didn't seem to jive with most players. And it just goes to show that making games is rough sometimes. And sometimes, especially for bigger budget games, the bar is so high that for like what, all these investors and all this money involved and like Cliffy B being a big name and people banking on that, still wasn't enough. So like, even if you don't like him or you didn't like the game, I think that the fact that there's less people out there making games now sucks. That's the bottom line. That's my bottom line. But in some news that is confirming leaks, uh, Hello Games took to the internet to reveal the release date for No Man's Sky, uh, the Xbox version. It's going to be dropping on Xbox One on July 24th, but if you look closely, you might notice something. The cover uh, has multiple characters, which is interesting because they detailed their next update, which is going to have full multiplayer support. Apparently they've been playtesting this for a long time. You're gonna be able to encounter players in the world and work together or fight each other. And uh, it seems like they're trying to finally reach the potential and realize the potential uh, that so many people put faith into this game back when it first released. Now, that's the big question. There is a community out there that is still with this game. I personally am not. I know you're all about it. I'm all about it, yeah. Raise your hand. There you go. People like Andrew are into it and are excited to see this update. So I wanna know what you guys out there think. Is it too little too late or, or too much too late for you? Or are you willing to give it another shot? Or maybe you just never gave it a shot at all. I'm curious to see what you guys are thinking. If you are down for discussing stuff like that though, I do consider checking out discord.gg slash game ranks if you haven't already. It's linked in the description below. That's our discord. It's kind of like a big weird messy party over there. Uh, but we're having a good time. There's a bunch of different channels to talk about different topics. So if you haven't swung by and check it out yet, maybe you should. You might have a good time. But of course, before we go, uh, some housekeeping. I do want to announce we are opening up glitch submissions for State of Decay 2. Uh, there is going to be a form 
down in the description. You can go there and you can send us your clips of glitches in the game. Uh, we're going to react to them and make a video. We got one coming out soon. The, the uh, State of Decay 2 is, there's a lot of glitches. It's definitely ripe for it. I don't know if you saw the before you buy I put up, but there, there is some glitches in that game. So I'm curious to see what you guys send us. Good luck. And last but certainly not least, the console giveaway we do every single week. You know how it works by now. There's a link in the description below. You click it to sign up, you enter once, then you enter for good. And then every single week, we randomly choose one person to win a free console of their choice. This week's winner is going to be this person right here. Congratulations, be sure to keep an eye on your inbox, your spam box, stuff like that, because Tom's gonna be getting in touch with you to figure out how we could send you your console. Be sure to check back for some follow-ups from us because we are gonna be shipping some stuff out soon. But now we gotta talk about all the video game stuff going on this week, because there's a lot. First of all, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, or Black Ops I, 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 I. Um, how do you feel about it? Do you think the multiplayer changes are enough? Are you happy that it's boots on the ground? Do you miss jetpacks? Are you gonna miss single player? Like weirdos like us. I don't know, let's talk about this. Do you happen to be someone with a disability? Will you be trying to use the Xbox adaptive controller? I would love to hear your perspective on it and what you think, but not only that, let's talk about Metro Exodus getting delayed. Are you okay for patiently waiting for that? Cause I know I am. Are you excited for Kingdom Hearts 3? And speaking of threes, do you think we're actually gonna see Borderlands 3 at E3? Let's talk about any of this stuff. I wanna hear from you guys. Also, what are you playing this weekend? Let's talk about this stuff down in the comments. I'll be down there talking to you guys. But of course, if you got anything for me at all, hit me up on those usual social medias or youtube.com slash Jake Baldino. But as always, thank you guys so much for coming around every Friday, talking video game news with all of us. Uh, it's a good time. If you did enjoy this, clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We do really appreciate it. But if you are new, you should subscribe, man, because we put out videos every day. We're busting ass. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.